All right, hey guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at my all new Ursa Minor J30 camper top from my 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. As you can see, this is a complete replacement hard top for the Jeep with a built in camper section up top. Okay, today we're going to talk about some of the different options that are available for this top from Ursa Minor. We're going to talk about some of the options I chose and why. All right, before we get started, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and as always, feel free to subscribe. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, let's start by taking a look at the outside of our J30 top. So the first thing you're going to notice is that our camper top will add about 8 to 10 inches of height to the overall height of our Jeep. So this wasn't really a big deal for me, but if you have a shallow carport or a shallow garage opening, it's something that you're going to want to think about ahead of time. Uh, the next is that I opted to have my roof latches mounted on the front of the camper top. If you plan on having a large like 270 awning or a 2500 ARB awning that's going to cover where the latch would go, you're going to want to sort of plan ahead for that and uh, have Ursa Minor mount your latches in the front instead of the side. All right, and then when you do open your roof latches, you're gonna wanna turn them over and lay them down so that way when the rear is trying to raise, they won't get caught. All right, and what I normally have found is easiest to do is just every time I open them, I turn them to the left and then I twist back right. That way the tension on the latch stays the same. And you don't want this super tight, just tight enough to create a seal with this bulb gasket. For the top roof section, you have a few different options for coating. One would be to just leave the entire thing, this white gel coat all the way around. You can see I opted for just the perimeter coating. I thought it would give it a nice finished look all the way around. Or you can have them cover the entire thing in this really nice bullet liner. I talked to a few different people online and uh, the general consensus was kind of for the money. It's a better option just to leave it white and on warm days this does better at not attracting heat and sort of keeps things cooler inside. Like if I put my hand here it's actually really cool to the touch versus right here where it's actually pretty hot. So just something to think about. And then uh, on the sides we have our bolts for our scissor hinges. Alright guys, so you can see that on the driver's side I have my ARB awning installed. This is the 2500 by 2500 or 8 foot by 8 foot awning. You can see here that I went ahead and opted for all four awning mounting brackets. Uh, from what I understand, these awning brackets can support up to about 50-ish pounds and it's more than enough to hold this awning. And then in the future, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and get a larger 270 awning or something like that. Uh, Ursa Minor will pretty much configure these however you want, you know, one in the front, one in the rear. Uh, if you want just two brackets in one place, you'll see on the other side I had them do that. But uh, yeah, overall pretty sturdy design. For the rear window sections, I opted to just keep them solid for now. There are a couple different options. You can get a factory solid glass installed, which I'm sure would look really nice. Also, there is a split window, which has a slider section that goes, I believe, forward. And then in place, you would have a screen. Uh, for now, I feel like this would add a little bit extra security. But since I do have uh, my Dometic fridge, with its compressor on the driver's side of the Jeep, I might opt for the split window in the future just to help let that fridge compressor breathe a little bit better. But for now, I'm just gonna go with this and uh, see what my needs end up being. Also, above the door line on each side, there's also this rain gutter, which has been stuck on with adhesive. And I think that's a really nice touch. Let's see, it runs all the way across. Let's see. For our passenger side, you can see like the drivers, I opted for the flat panel. And then the only thing that I did different over here was I had them add two awning mounts to the rear of the top. So that way I could add my quick pitch ensuite shower room. Okay, then coming around the rear, everything's pretty standard. We just have our nice factory glass. 
Uh, there is an option to have the factory windshield wiper and factory defrosters installed. If you don't opt for that, there are just two little plugs where those holes would be. And from what I've heard uh, from long time reviews, you do have to kind of keep an eye out for those and them coming out, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be too much of a problem. We have some really nice solid struts that support our glass and has a really nice feel to it. I really, really like it. Um, up top, I know that there is the option to have two awning mounting brackets installed for something like a smaller ARB awning but uh, I didn't really need that and then of course we have our really nice Ursa Minor nameplate with our third brake light which I think is a really nice touch. Moving into the front cab area of our J30 you can see I went ahead and got the two organizers for the roof area. I'm not 100% sure how much storage space they'll really add but I thought that they would be a really nice touch put some flatter things like maps or papers up in there and then there are these little storage pockets which I'm sure you could find some kind of use for pretty nice overall you can see the perimeter has this really nice finish to it I really like it and then up top we have uh, a USB which I had them add that is an extra charge this is always hot it's connected straight to the battery and then I had them add this 12 volt plug also. Thought that might come in handy for something. And both of these are always hot connected to the battery. And then we have our single switch that controls the main power for our camper section. All right. Okay, and then in the passenger rear, you can see we have our two entrance panels up into our top. And it's important to remember that when you're either lowering or raising the top, you wanna to keep one of these out of the way so that way air can pass through and the top can uh, compress and expand. And then we have this nice piece of trim going all the way around. Okay, and then just over our rear roll bar, you can see we have our red tag, which when you pull on it, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a little pop, and that actually frees up the two rear latches that hold the top down. Okay, now that our front and rear latches are undone, we can just simply raise our top, and it pretty much does all the work by itself. Okay, now that our top is up, you can get an idea of what all that really looks like down there. See the hinges, how they go up into the top, the struts. It's pretty cool. You can see here are our bottom latches. Just how exactly those work. And you can see up in the top, there are these two pins. Secure them. We have our strap for pulling it down. Another latch. And it just kind of looks all the way down. Pretty cool. All right, and then to gain access, we simply just climb up into our top. All right, you can see here we have our passenger side latch and they have these little handles on them to help them get them up when you're in, on the inside. And then you can see all these pads are easily removable. We have our push click dome light. Each side gets a simple LED light with a little button on the back. Yeah, pretty cool. And then, of course, we have our rod, which I understand can be optional, but it's pretty much just a support rod to help keep the top off. I suppose if you had some high winds or a high snow load potential. So pretty cool overall, pretty sturdy. And then you can see I do have this one side down with just the mesh in place. Kind of hard to tell, but. There's a 
elastic drawstring that helps suck the edges in when the top closes. And then here at the footwell, we have another vent. You can see that, and it goes all the way across. I haven't had to open that up yet. Mm, pretty nice. Uh, the top is just a nice soft fabric. Pretty nice feel to it. There's our clip for our strut. A couple handles to help pull the top down. Yeah, overall pretty nice. So like I showed you, this side does have this nice mesh panel that will let in a lot of fresh air and kind of let things breathe while still keeping most of the bugs out. Uh, and then on this side, I'll show you how you do have the option of completely opening things up. And you have a perfect view to the outside world. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then if you want, you can just simply roll up your window. And just kind of tuck it away. And then, yeah. You can get a really nice view for photography, like a nice platform. Or, you know, you can stargaze at night, get a telescope, do whatever you want. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, with the top open, you can get a much better view of these awning brackets and how they work. So you can see that if you have something like an ARB awning with this piece of aluminum extrusion and the way that the bolts are spaced out, you would use these two bottom holes and then you can pretty much just line it up with this sort of center channel. And if you had something else that needed to be mounted, there's this top hole and you can kind of imagine how you have a lot of options there. Right. And you kind of see that there's this sort of little plastic backing piece that spaces it out from the body of the Ursa Minor J30. All right guys, so real quick, I wanna talk about some measurements. You can see that if we go end to end from cloth fabric to cloth fabric, the inside of the tent measures at almost exactly 88 inches. And if we measure from the end of the mattress to the other end, we're just over 85 inches in length. For overall width, I don't know if you can see, but we're almost at exactly 52 inches. And then for the overall mattress width, we're at almost exactly 48 and a half inches. At the shallow end of our top from our mattress to the roof, we're just at exactly 11 inches. At the middle section of our camper top, we're just at about 30 inches from the top of the mattress to the roof. At the very top edge or highest point in our camper, from the top of the mattress just to the corner, we're just at about 43 and a quarter to 43 and a half inches. Another nice feature that you can have added in the sleeper section of your J30 is they have the option for these USB ports. This is my driver's side rear. And then on the passenger side, I actually have a 12 volt plug. So that's really nice. I can charge devices, maybe run a small inverter. And then like every Ursa Minor since production started, there's a number right here for whichever top it is. And mine is number 442. I don't know how well that shows up, but yep, kind of cool. You know just how many have been made and which one you are. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool design, guys. I'm really, really pleased with it. You can see around the perimeter there, there's just this little channel with these little screws. This is where the power comes up from the inside of the top on the passenger side into the Ursa Minor top. You can see it just passes through right there. And then it travels up behind this headliner and that's how your switches, or I'm sorry, that's how your lights get power. Yeah, overall pretty cool. Like I said, I'm pretty pleased. Okay, now let's go take a look at some more of the interior. 
All right, so on the interior of the Jeep, you can see where it meets the top of the Jeep's body. Everything's covered with this really nice carpety felt material. Around the rear, you can see those are where the bolts or the awning brackets come through. Back there, they're kind of included by my XG cargo bag. And then you'll notice in the corner, there's these almost like little humps. And this is where the wiring for your 12 volt uh, plug in USB are. And it's actually really nice because it makes it really easy to switch those out if you want. Like I think I might be switching the 12 volt with another dual USB, like a Blue C systems plug perhaps. You can see it's just really nice. Really nice felt lining all the way around. See, there's the two wires for our rear latches when you pull. Kind of hear that a little bit. But yeah, just really nice, guys. Yeah. Same on the driver's side. It's really nice felt material all over the place. Yeah. Pretty nice. And like I was saying, from what I understand, or I've been told by the guys that are some minor, it's very important that you leave one of these panels cracked. So pretty much kind of push the cushion over to the side and then leave your panel just to the side so that way air can rush out as you're trying to compress the top. Okay, now that it's time to take our top down, you're gonna wanna take this top latch and pull down and get your top to right about here where it will sort of support itself. And then you want to push in. And then on each side, to keep the material from getting caught in our hinges, you're going to want to push in and almost bring it to a crease. I don't know how well you can see that. And just do that with both sides. Give it a nice fold. I don't know how well you can tell, but you can see down there maybe how the hinges sort of scissor down and you want to have this nice crease so that way there's no chance of that fabric getting caught and slit. Okay, and then we just carefully continue to lower our top. Make sure it's not hitting any of my awning bolts, something that I need to work on. All right, and then down and then to re-secure our latches, just, and you'll hear them click. And that ain't going nowhere. And then to re-secure our front latches, like I said, I always go left and then back to right. All right, so in the front of the Jeep, just behind the A-pillar, you can see that there are some bolts, and these are on both sides, which help secure the top down in place. Okay, and then I don't really want to remove this felt lining to show you completely, but you can see right behind the rear door, right about here, here, and then just behind the C-pillar, right here, we do have another series of bolts which help secure the top down to the body, and that's on both sides. All right, guys, as you often hear me say, overall, I'm pretty pleased. I really, really love the J30. I think it's gonna be a great addition to the Jeep. The form, the fit, the finish is absolutely perfect. Haven't found a single flaw in it yet. Works really well. The weight was a little bit considerable, but you know, given all things going on in the world, I wasn't too uh, you know, upset about that. As some of you are surely wondering, uh, my total cost for the Ursa Minor installed, I drove to the Ursa Minor factory in Chula Vista, it took them about three hours to do the install. It was really great, the guys there were really nice. And my overall cost was just about $8,300. Uh, some of you might say that's a lot for you know just a simple Jeep top, but when you consider that uh, factory hard top is a little bit over three thousand dollars and then you're adding on the cost of the camper and what you get I think it's a actually a pretty good deal yeah I really like it 
If you're wondering why I went with the J30, uh, previously you might have seen my videos where I had my roof rack with my soft top and my uh, ARB rooftop tent. All of that together weighed about 300 pounds, a little bit over, and the Ursa Minor weighs about 250. So I actually ended up saving some weight and the way the Jeep carries the weight of the top is a lot better with the Ursa Minor. You don't have all that high center of gravity weight. So the Jeep rides really, really well in case you're wondering. Yeah, well guys, I hope you like this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did like it, as always, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you click the notification bell so you get updates about all my new content. And as always, feel free to subscribe. All right, you guys take it easy.